Hi besties. So the first question is, I enjoy your book segments on you on your channel. You seem disciplined enough to read a book. Thank you, KO. This is from KO. Tell us how we can develop that discipline and also how you gravitate towards the books you read. How did you develop the curiosity on the subject? So I read books by black female authors generally or mostly because I feel like if I, as a black person, I do not support black authors. It's very unlikely that people from other races will do, even though people read books because they want to read books, but it's I'm very intentional about supporting black authors, specifically female authors, because I gravitate towards women where the brain is concerned. Even though now I want to start reading books by black men as well, um, choosing the genres and stuff. I don't know, I feel like I do not enjoy fiction, um, romance that much, so just books on actual everyday life issues make more sense to me. I do not really enjoy self-help books, I'd rather listen to a podcast for self-help instead of reading. Am I saying that I don't read books by Caucasian authors, for example, I've read books by Caucasian authors. One of my favorite authors is Francine Rivers and she writes Christian fiction and she's amazing, but I would rather pick up a Chimamanda book over her book now. It's because I want to support my people. I don't know, it's a race thing. And it's also, I generally enjoy how they write, the, the authors that I read. The second question is, hi Nomfundo, I've heard Hi, Lilitu. I've heard a lot of people say teaching ESL is like putting your life on pause if you don't see teaching as a long-term career. What are your thoughts on that? My thoughts, I feel like, okay, they, those people might be onto something. I feel like if you want to build a career, you probably want to start as soon as possible so there is something to that but also one thing I know about people as I grow up is that people project their fears and they project their opinions on others if you feel like it's something that you need to do for now you're not the only person who's going to put their career on pause and come to side I've seen lawyers here I've seen doctors put um, their careers on pause I've seen people from engineers put careers on pause it's so many people pilots as well just to teach yourself to take a break to debrief to make more money because believe it or not, people in these careers also, sometimes they're not making as, as much as they need to be to be making. Or if they are making that much, they are working so hard to earn the exact same amount or even more, less than what they would make here. So sometimes it's not just, it's a, it's a you, you, you have to look at what you want when I, as a person, and if going abroad is going to be a negative thing, are you going? Is it going to harm your life? I I don't know. I think not. And then you take it from there. Depending on your career path as well, I'm not sure what you do. But if it were me, I would say, okay, how much am I, am I making in my field now in SA? How much am I going to be making in five years time? How much am I going to be making in China if your motive is, is money? If you wanna explore and travel, it's not just about money as well, it's about exploring. You can get jobs in your field abroad as well. So it's not just, you know? Yeah, I hope this helps. People project though, so be careful of listening to people about your care. Yes, taking advice is, is awesome. You can do that, but people project their fears a lot. I got a lot of negative comments when I was moving this side. So you want to check that all the time. Be careful. Bulana. Hi, Bulana. So Bulana says, hi, Nomfundo. Um, what is your take with salary expectations for first-time teachers? Uh, I've got this question from two different recruiters. Look. Even now, it frustrates me so much when I'm applying for jobs and I'm asked what salary am I expecting? I don't know. So it depends. You could, you, you probably want to 
depending on what city you're going to, because I can't say, even in Shanghai, I can't say, I can't speak for you, but you want to check the rent, like how much is housing, how much are the utilities, um, you want to check just the living expenses in that city and how much you'd love to save back home or here. And then, yeah, if, for example, a person asked me how much I want to make now in Shanghai, I probably would say anything about above 25, right? And then that's like my, my, my expectation. But as a first time teacher, um, are they going to give you that much? Probably, sometimes, you never know. Just say what you think you are worth. Know your worth, right? In life, in relationships, in jobs as well, I guess. I'm not the best person to answer that because I don't know how to answer the question myself. But a lot of times I'm just like, this is how much I want to say, this is how much I want to spend, and then, yeah, take it from there. Wanda says, are you interested in going back to the classroom when you come back to SA and what school is your ideal school, high or primary, model C, semi, um, private, rural or private school if you were to choose? If I were ever to come to SA, Wanda says, when you come back, both of you, Wandile. If I were to go back to SA, I would wish to change careers, so I would not want to go back to SA to teach. If life happened and I was forced to go back to teaching in SA, then I would teach in high school. I'm a high school trained teacher, so I, I was trained to be a grade 10 to 12 teacher anyway, and I did teach in high school in SA. So I would definitely teach in a high school and what type of school it really doesn't matter as long as it's in a city, I guess. Not in the rural areas. Anyway, it's okay. Really. Um, private, public, as long as it's not rural, the rural areas, I'm good. Okay, Khumuto says, hi. Hi, Khumuto. How frequent are the COVID testings, let's say, in a week or a month? So, when we... Okay, before the end of this semester of last semester which was june we just really never tested for covid at work and then in schools rather and then when we opened again so remember we had a long lockdown and then we didn't go to work since march or feb this year i only went back to work in september so since going back this new semester we were testing every day and then recently we've transitioned and now we only test on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, which I only test on Monday and Wednesday. And then Friday, I'm just like, I'm not doing that. So yeah, we test three times now, but before we tested um, every day because we needed 24 hours on our code thingy. And then now the government said 72 hours is okay, so we don't have to test every day. Hi, Catherine. So she says, hey, do you have life insurance that covers repatriation? If yes, which one? I don't. I, I do not. I need to fix that. I don't. <laughs> I will fix this. My friend and I were talking about this, and it's so careless not to have one, but currently I do not have that. Um, Bongi. Bongi says, hello, hi Bongi. How did you apply to study at UNESA? How did they send you study material to China? I also want to study when I get there in Jan. Okay, so we fortunately live in times where everything can be done online, right? But before COVID, they would just I would register online and then UNESA would send my study, my study material here using the plane I guess and then I would get my study material at the gate at work and then I in twin I think after a year of doing that I just downloaded my study material and never received hard copies during COVID and yeah now UNISA is pretty much online for the most part. I'm not sure if they're going to be doing that permanently, but they used to be they used to have exam centers abroad, like Shanghai did have an exam center and some other cities and other countries abroad. So if say for example when COVID went away, then I'll go to the center like norm, in the normal way. Every, I'm just basically saying everything can be done online now, 
it's just something that you'd figure out. You don't need to worry about that. Um, MK. MK says, hey, what are you studying right now and how long are you planning to stay in China? So I'm doing communication science, um, my honours. It's in integrated organisational communication. So I decided to go the corporate route. I have reasons for that. And how long am I planning on staying in China? As long as I need to stay here? As long as life allows, I don't know, I don't know what the future holds, but as long as I need to be here, as long as God still wants me to be here, I'll be here. When it's time to leave, I'll leave. Am I planning to settle here? Nope. I hope I don't have to settle here. Lisa Gazi is asking about debt. How did you manage your debts back at home? How can you recommend we handle finances, exchanging currency at low rates, etc.? Um, I did not really have debts at home. I had bills, but not really debt. Um, so I don't know if I'm the right person to answer this question. <sighs> Recommend how we can handle finances. Live within your means. Be okay with what you have. I can definitely answer this one. Live within your means. Like, no, this is how much I have. My friends have this much and they are doing this. I do not have that. And so I'm going to excuse myself and spend some weekends at home because I can't afford to do a X, Y, Z, and, and Z. Do not try to live a life that people expect you to live because you do a certain job. Like people expect me to have so much money. When you live abroad and you go back to SA, there's this expectation that you have money, but it just doesn't, life doesn't work like that. So know your balance, live within your means, buy stuff you can afford, don't live to impress other people, and you'll be good. And it's all about you. If, for example, you go to church and you wanna slay and buy heels all the time, no, you can just wear your sneakers and go to church for example, or if you are into sneakers, I'm a sneaker head, so I like sneakers, but I've gone through periods of not, of not buying sneakers at all. I've gone through periods of not buying clothes at all because I was focusing on saving and making sure that I have enough savings, that I have sort of financial freedom even now i don't just go out and buy things that i don't need so know what you need know your balance know your background understand that everyone sometimes most people are faking it so siso siso says any advice for upcoming young south african teachers who's who want to broaden their experience to international level teaching in qatar or new zealand or dubai just just apply i don't know you apply, you hope for the best, for the best, and then you take it from there. There's really nothing else you can do in terms of or try to find the best recruiters, I guess. Ask people in their country to watch videos like the ones I make for people who want to come to China. Maybe there's people in New Zealand making the same videos. Yeah, but just apply, 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 hope for the best, and do your best in interviews. Slay those interviews. Okay, so. Angel. So Angel says, what do you love the most about yourself and what do you feel insecure about? I think one thing I love about myself is the fact that I'm very self-aware at this point. I've put in work and it's my favorite trait because it helps me navigate life better. And yeah, I also think the fact that I just mind my own business and I do my own thing without putting so much pressure. I don't expect a lot from people. I don't, I enjoy people loving on me and being there for me, but also I don't really, I'm self-sufficient. So that's like my favorite thing. I'm loving as well, I'm fun. I am very funny, believe it or not. Yeah, what am I most insecure about? I think my speech for the most part, Especially because when I speak, this is Zulu, right? There's, you, you speak too fast or you eat your words when, you, when I speak English and stuff. So hearing those comments all the time growing up as well, people didn't mean bad, of course. But I've become so self-conscious about just how I speak sometimes. Especially when I speak and a person says, huh? Or they can't hear me. I'm like... I thought I said that correctly. What did I say? Did I say it wrong? So I do have an insecurity about just my speech. 
and many other insecurities i guess um I, that i can't think about but mostly it's my speech and many insecurities i'm sure number one is just my speech would you advise someone after their final year who wants to do the same as you teach abroad first year at university get a job in south africa so that you, they save up for all expenses expenses to go abroad i know people who finished university and came straight or went straight abroad so that's doable maybe if you have family members that can help with that you can still do it some schools are very willing to help in such cases where they loan you money up front and stuff so it is doable but if you think you want to work in SA a little bit so that you sort yourself out a little bit that's also a plan so it's just up to you do you want to struggle a little bit and have to rely on people to move or do you want to finance the whole thing yourself I did the latter so it's up to you okay so what qualification do you have and where did you study and did you have to work first in SA for financial independence or perhaps your family supported you so what qualification do I have I do have a be a, a bachelor of education so I have a teaching degree I have a BA in communication science currently working in a BA honors in communication science specifically specializing not specializing as such but in integrated organizational communication did i have to work in sa yep i do not come from a family that has a lot of money i don't come from money at all what is the kind of age for teaching in china if there is um also are you allowed to wear makeup <laughs> to work or are some are there some restrictions reggie um kind of age is for women, I think it's the same as SA, is it not 60? And then for men, it's 65. Uh, are you allowed to wear makeup? Some schools encourage teachers to wear makeup. My friend told me that when they were teaching online, the school told them that they need to wear makeup. They, they need to wear makeup to teach. I don't know why. Um, are you allowed to wear makeup? For sure you are. Do you want to wear makeup to work? Yeah, if you want to. If you don't want to, you don't want to. But some schools ask you specifically. <laughs> do wear it i guess i don't know why maybe kids care and then affairs no no dosh so she says I, i'm guessing it's it's it's, it's she Me? they say hey nomfundo sissy we love you so much thank you love you right back do you have friends in china if yes how many i do not remember the one i vlog where by unabangan Hmm. So my channel is not a life. It's not a, a lifestyle channel right now. Maybe in the future I'm going to transition and have a lifestyle channel. I have friends. I don't know how many friends I have in China. I have quite a few friends. Close friends. Let's see. Um, maybe three close friends. Then I have quite a few acquaintances. I even if I had a lifestyle channel. I don't know how to approach the topic of just having people filming people. I, I don't know. To me, it feels a little bit intrusive, and I'm still very scared to do that for now. I do go to parties if you're wondering. I do go to stuff, but also I am in school, and that means my weekends really are just for housework, resting a little bit, and getting a lot of schoolwork done. So I don't really go out a lot. Even with school out of the way, I'm still not going to go out a lot. I'm not a person who goes out a lot. I'm very, I'm very introverted. I enjoy being at home, doing my own thing. So yeah, I do have friends, darling. I just, or you can check my shots as well. There's quite a few, there's two shots with friends there if you wanted to see them. So yeah, you're very welcome to go. No, there's three shots with friends very welcome to go and check my shorts content all right so non miss okay so says okay can you go teach abroad even if you don't have a laptop will you survive in school working without your own pc or they also provide so one should not stress if you don't have a laptop you want to let your school know because my school does provide laptops for teachers other schools my first school did not provide laptops for teachers so if you don't have one you definitely want to most schools will give you a laptop or a, a tablet or something if you don't have one in my first school i didn't need a laptop a lot 
I just used the black board and the white board. So I don't think there's something to worry about that much. I'm sure if you don't have your personal one, the school will have laptops or computers on campus that you can use that are accessible to everyone. So yeah, I don't think you should worry about that that much, but do let them know that you don't have one when you happen to get a job. Ubongi says, please advise, how much would you advise someone with five years of teaching experience in SA with an honors education in a TFL, how much would you say they should settle for in a tier one to city? You've experienced an essay, but you don't have experience teaching abroad, so there's a difference. And they mostly recognize people, they pay people with master's degrees a lot more. I don't know anything about people with honors degrees. And some, also sometimes your qualifications when it comes to TA to ESL really don't matter to be honest. People with just one degree can make as much as 35, depending on a lot of things, the race as well, I've, I've spoken about this before. So your first time around, you've never taught ESL, that's something, I don't know. I, I can't say how much, just look, in, if you were to come into Shanghai, you have those qualifications, I would ask for 25 and above. 25 also excluding rent and other benefits, to be precise. 